So the next person I'm going to introduce is Hono Faber. I met Hono a year ago only, but it feels like we've been schoolmate. Um, it's, uh, it's been very intense. I think we are together to do pretty cool things. You hear from him. Uh, he's a tech guy, an entrepreneur, but also a very passionate um, patient with living with an F2. And I think his life has been changed and um, touched by it. And the good thing about it is that he's now committed to do something for patients and cool things is coming, I think. So I don't want to take time from your presentation that I think is jump packed. So please welcome Hondo. Let's see. Good morning, everybody. Um, are there many uh, people from the other coast here? having trouble waking up. <laughs> uh, I was one of them. <laughs> um, yeah, delighted to be here. Um, I've been here for a few days now. Um, I was giving a, another talk for a smaller group of people. There is some duplication in it, so for the people that see things a second time, is repetition is key. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I actually... Um, uh, was a bit late to the party, like I was uh, having my first symptoms uh, when I was 32. I started with hearing loss, and then it turned out like, oh, you have a tumor. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and then it turned out I had more. Um, so. Uh, they diagnosed me with NF2 uh, about three years ago. Uh, I just at that point moved to uh, San Francisco and I've been in tech for about 20 years and I knew people in tech and that were working on genome sequencing. So what do you do? Well, um, oh, this is, uh, I will come back to that. So you sequence your tumor, right? Um, so that's, that's what I ended up doing. I had a tumor surgery coming up and uh, had an opportunity to kind of map out the whole genome of the tumor. And all my friends who were in tech, they had the opportunity to analyze it. And um, we think we found some, some interesting stuff in there um, that uh, kind of made me hungry for more. Uh, so I came at it like in a very explorative way, like not knowing at all, like, if it would lead to something interesting, and I, I honestly still don't know. Um, but just being able to kind of do this on your own, um, it felt pretty, pretty cool. And uh, pretty soon I was talking to some of the researchers and they started to get interested too. So, um, you know, working with them uh, on this project, which is kind of now uh, a hobby, um, yeah, I wanted to kind of show you this. This is a tile that my mom uh, gave me uh, the day before my surgery because she thought it was very applicable to me. She recognized <laughs> uh, this, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, like, I'm a person, I need problems. <laughs> like, otherwise, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this is what I've, what I've always done and um, something I keep in mind. and. I remember like uh, when I was going into surgery, like asking um, my friends and family um, to support me in this way. It's like, I got this problem and it, it sucks, but maybe it is for something good. Let's see what, you know, what good comes out of it. And to be honest, like, you know, being a part of this community and meeting all of you um, along the way, uh, it's, it's incredible. Like, uh, the energy people have, <laughs> like, you know, as Alwyn also mentioned, the sp other speakers, it's just it's something very, uh, very special. Uh, like, about a year ago, like, uh, I think when I met Salvo for the first time in person, <laughs> Uh, I organized a, a hackathon with another group of people um, around my genome. Um, so I had my data, and I was curious, what do other people uh, do with this data if I give it to them? 
it uh, turned out like uh, 300 people came over to hack on it <laughs> for three days in a row. <laughs> they didn't have much sleep. Um, Google sponsored it, like they gave us unlimited computing power. And what, you know, what was really interesting for me is that uh, two worlds came together, like a world of like the researchers, people that were already active in NF2 and an entirely new world of like engineers and computer engineers that uh, were confronted with this problem. And I thought, you know, I want to kind of uh, see if I can make it exciting for all these people to work on rare disease. So I'm going to walk you through a few things. Um, I think we live in a pretty interesting time. Like if this would have happened to me 20 years ago, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Uh, yeah, we have cheaper sequencing, more computer power. Uh, there is new biotech coming up that, um, you know, is part of powerful stuff. Um, but the, the problem still is like, even if you have a treatment, bringing it to the market is still very, very expensive. And uh, for rare disease, especially a big hurdle. Um, yeah, there are, like, there are about like 7,000 rare diseases and most of them don't have a treatment option, right? Um, the problems, like as everybody says, it's just smaller numbers. Uh, really hard to collect enough data to jumpstart all these uh, programs. Uh, very like roughly uh, drug development, we have like the first phase is discovery and developing the technology. Then it's like second stage is more like proving that it actually works and it's not toxic. And, it's, and then the third phase is like the commercial phase for the industry, like putting it on the market and keeping like the validation that it still, still works. So, of course, uh, discovery costs a lot of money already. We all know that because <laughs> here we are, like uh, trying to do something about that. But also, we shouldn't forget, like, even if you have something, bringing it to the market is also a very expensive process because hundreds of millions of dollars, and um, a lot of potential programs actually fall through the cracks uh, because of this, especially in rare disease, because the market is not that big. Uh, so what I, what I kind of rolled into is why don't we build like a research platform centered around better care for patients that kind of turns this model around a bit um, so we can start developing some of the resources that you need later on during drug development already today uh, with the patients. Um, that way you can like save a lot of time and make it more attractive for the industry to pick like our ideas up and actually commercialize them. Because in the end of the day, like if you're a patient, like there can be the most marvelous technology out there, but if we don't have it in our hands, it's not worth a lot to us. So um, yeah, so kind of the mission uh, of what I'm gonna kind of show you a few screenshots of uh, is help the patients help you and myself, <laughs> to be honest, uh, manage their own care. Um, that's one part, and all the while creating like fertile ground for uh, rare disease drug development. Um, yeah, just if you haven't read it yet, I recently um, wrote a small article on the CTS blog uh, about this, so I encourage you to check that out. Uh, so yeah, we've built like a, a site uh, product where you know patients can manage their own clinical data related to NF1, NF2, schwannomatosis uh, specifically. Uh, so what we do is like we help you get all your data in the secure platform. It's only you control it, and we structure it and generate like a timeline with all the clinically relevant data points on it. Um, you can also, for example, it includes radiology, um, so you can also, if you want, like see your brain in the browser. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this is also useful to, if you bring your data somewhere else, like remotely, you can uh, pretty easily access it. Uh, another thing I'm really excited about is uh, we are developing ways to uh, structure the papers, like deeply structure and get all the data points out of it. Uh, this is an example of like hearing test where uh, we kind of index all the numbers 
uh, out of the data and we can create like longitudinal hearing reports for the patients. Uh, plus, of course, like put this in a bigger context and uh, see how things correlate to, for example, drugs or build like natural history studies and resources that you need uh, for the drug development later on. Uh, another thing I'm really excited about is, uh, I mean, by the way, we are working with CTF on this, uh, and I'm really, really grateful about that uh, part. Um, we also have like survey uh, systems in the platform, so it's not only about the clinical data, but also about uh, like being able to do studies, surveys, and uh, create like a modern registry uh, with CTF. Uh, I unfortunately cannot demo it because of the technology, I, otherwise I would have given you a live demo, but I'm happy to uh, show you later, just, uh, just hit me up. Um, so a few of the key reasons uh, why this, I think this is important, uh, so we can help the patient uh, to keep all their data together. Like we all know, like sometimes you need to go to another clinic for different reasons and it's really important to have it all in one place. Um, we can generate like longitudinal insights. This, I have seen this, patients use this. Um, I've seen it change sometimes clinical decisions. If you have like a good picture of what happens to one tumor versus the other. Um, yeah, we are working on providing uh, extra services on top of it, so like volumetric uh, measurements, like uh, we're working with a center that's going to do that um, for a relatively affordable rate. <laughs> uh, so you, they can kind of look at all your radiology studies and make like a historical, remeasure everything volumetrically uh, or like provide sequencing. Like it was actually incredibly hard uh, for me to get sequenced, like the odds were so low. Uh, I had to work with like an ex-phlebotomist that came to my office to draw my blood and I ordered dry eyes online, and <laughs> shipped it over, it was incredible. Uh, so like making a service out of that for patients that want to get their whole genome mapped out and contribute that to research, and that's also something we are working on. Uh, and then, of course, like easily sharing your data with a remote doctor or with like a doctor that you already know, um, that's also part of it. So patients can just send a, a link to the doctor instead of like piles of CDs and copies uh, of papers. And I think the best part is uh, like together building this resource of like high quality, uh, deeply structured de-identified data that we can use for research. That's like what we, of course, deeply care about mostly. <laughs> I've been actually very surprised that this seems to be the first motivation for patients rather than their own care want to contribute to research. Like, this is remarkable. But uh, yeah, I, I think combining it is probably the best way to go. Um, yeah, so. Another thing I just want to highlight is uh, we are probably all very well connected to the top centers, but 80% of the patients is like either in the middle of the country or seeing a doctor that doesn't see a lot of NF patients. Uh, and I think this platform like, can also in the future be incredibly useful for the people that are remote and are not connected to one of the top centers yet. Um, and I've seen that uh, multiple times over Uh, just a word on like like privacy security. I'm not sure if you all know what HIPAA means, but uh, <laughs> I think I think it's actually our job to explain that. But um, this is like the primary concern people have, so we want to address that. Like um, it is not like Facebook. It's not like an online sharing community. It's like something private. Um, of course, we can de-identify your data and use it for research, but. We are going to be extremely transparent about that. So, keep, uh, we are going to tell you if a research project is coming up, and if you really don't like it, you can opt out. So, we are going to give you a lot of controls. Uh, I think this is a really important principle because, most importantly, is that the patients trust us with their data. So, 
I would be really interested to hear from this community especially because you're so involved if there are any concerns around this stuff um, because I think we're going to be able to explain it. Um, so please, please let me know and uh, give, me, give me feedback. <laughs> um, this is the current team. Uh, it's actually an expanding team at the moment, but uh, I work with uh, Nancy and, and Leo uh, on this, and uh, those people don't have an F, but I can tell you they are extremely passionate about this too. And uh, that makes me actually really excited. I'm, going to try to pull in as many people as possible to <laughs> that don't have the disease to, to work on this. Um, again, we're, yeah, we're just getting started. Like, uh, I'm really excited on the path forward. I'm really excited to work with CTF, and all the amazing patients that have uh, so far contributed. Um, you know, hit me up, send me an email, uh, go to the website, sign up, and um, yeah, Please be in touch, and I look forward to, uh, to working with all of you. Thank you.